All right, so we've shown um, nice, simple deals all the reactions, and this is going to react to give a dyne and dienophile. But you know what? Some of our dyne's and dienophiles, sometimes they have R groups on them. So let's put an R group on our diene and an R group on our dienophile. And now the real question is, where do these R groups end up in the product? Well, we need to number our carbons. That's important. And this is one possibility that the, the R, R and R prime groups would end up exactly as shown. But or there's another possibility. And that is that our dienophile could flip upside down and instead react like this so that the R prime ends up at what, what we would call the number five carbon instead. So which happens? This is, this is a question of regiochemistry. So to figure this out, we need to think about the, the charges on our diene and dienophile. And the charges on our diene and dienophile are affected by our R groups. So if R is something like an alkyl group or an OR group or a nitrogen group, These are both what we, all three, what we classify as electron donating groups. They, they feed electron density into whatever they're attached to. And R groups can also be things like carbonyls or maybe a cyano group or nitro is a classic. These are all electron withdrawing groups and they pull electron density from the diene and dienophile. So let's look at this. Here is our diene and we put an R group on here. Now typically uh, on the diene R is going to be an electron donating group. It's going to be one of these types of groups. That's just in general. So if this is a, if R is an electron donating group, then R is going to be electron rich. Electron rich things, we associate negative charges with them. I'm not really saying there's a charge there. I'm just saying we're associating a charge. So if this is negative, normally charges alternate. So plus, minus, plus, minus. So if R is minus, then we're going to alternate the charge around the ring. Again, these aren't real formal charges. I'm just trying to associate a charge with each carbon to figure out how to line things up. In general, our dienophile, let me draw it down in the bottom left here, our dienophile tends to have electron withdrawing groups. So we're going to pull from things that look like this. So, uh, you know, let, let, let's not draw just a vanilla R group. Let, let's draw something real. Let's draw a carbonyl. A carbonyl, we tend to think of as an electron withdrawing group, and things that are electron poor, we tend to associate a positive charge. So. If this carbon has a positive charge, and we typically alternate charges around the rest of the atoms. So what happens here? So we have an R group. Let's make this a methyl group, some real group, real electron donating group. If we line these up in this manner, and those are the carbons of the diene and dienophile that approach each other, then we are lining up a plus and a minus. That's good and a plus or a minus and a plus that's good opposite charges attract and we get this as the preferred regiochemical outcome as opposed to trying the other way uh, let's make that a real group let's flip this upside down and try the other regiochemical outcome if so uh, methyl group is donating negative now just go the opposite way around. A carbonyl group, positive, minus plus. If we tried to line things up this way, we'd be pairing the positive charges with each other and the negative charges with each other. That is less favorable because there's, there's electronic repulsion. But that would give us the other, the other regioisomer. 
this one is the one that's favored. So, how do you determine the regiochemical outcome of Diels-Alder reaction? You look at the R groups on your dying and dienophile, decide if they are electron donating or electron withdrawing groups, then you put on the appropriate charges on your dying and dienophile and you line them up to make sure that things, you match opposite charges to get what will presumably, presumably be the major product.